No myth about peatlands is more exciting than peatlands themselves. A habitat where water and land form a fascinating bond. An incredible variety of creatures like that. Due to a high groundwater level or rain, or a mixture of both, peatlands are wet. Sometimes more, sometimes less. We benefit from what is called peatland oscillation, because it can buffer heavy rainfalls or floods, for example. During drought, it releases water into surrounding landscapes. In addition, intact peatlands remove nutrients and pollutants from the water that flows through them. And as if all that were not enough, they also help us to protect the climate as enormous carbon stores. To put it simply, the secret of the natural climate guardian's success is this. Lots of water, little oxygen. Peatland plants do what plants do. They take up CO2 and bind the carbon in their biomass. Once sunk into the wet peatland, dead plants will be not completely decomposed by microorganisms because there is too little oxygen down there. The carbon-rich plant remains accumulate as peat, or in other words, as huge carbon stores. Peatlands cover only about 3% of the world's land area. Nevertheless, they contain twice as much carbon as the total biomass of all the forests on Earth, an incredible amount. But they can only store carbon as long as they are wet. Because if water is withdrawn from the peatlands, oxygen penetrates and microorganisms can decompose the peat. The stored carbon is released into the atmosphere as CO2. Then peatlands turn from climate guardians to climate killers. Before we knew what peatlands could do, we have drained them with great effort for centuries. Half of the drained peatlands worldwide are used for agriculture. But we also rely on peat soils in forestry and for peat extraction. Worldwide, up to 15% of peatlands are drained. 12% are so badly destroyed that they can no longer form peat. The majority is in a largely natural state, but is highly endangered. The dry figures for Germany. 95% of its peatlands are drained. In this condition, they cause 7% of total national emissions. And now, the good news. When it comes to climate protection, peatlands are our allies, if we let them. Most climate-friendly are intact peatlands. We need to protect these by preventing their drainage. Peatlands that have already been drained are damaged forever. However, by rewetting, we can prevent them from releasing further greenhouse gases and help them to become habitats of rare animals and plant species again. In the meantime, we have also found out how to use wet and waterlogged areas sustainably. For example, with pollute culture. So when we grow crops on wet soils, which grow particularly well exactly there. From these renewable raw resources, we can produce, for example, building and insulation materials, horticultural substrates, packaging, or bioplastics. Three reasons why we should include polluting culture in our vocabulary and our climate protection. The re-wetting of peatlands reduces greenhouse gases. Long-lasting products sequester carbon. They can also replace fossil raw materials in energy-intensive products. To achieve our climate goals, we need peatlands, and we need them wet. Specifically, this means that we in Europe must re-wet at least 1 million hectares of drained peatlands per year. This roughly corresponds to the area of the second largest lake in Europe, Lake Onega. Specific measures, socially acceptable and economically attractive, are needed to promote the re-wetting of peatlands. Because for the quality of our lives, we simply cannot afford it, leaving them out to dry.